Hello friends, my name is Jess and welcome or welcome back to my channel, Books Past Bedtime. Today I'm bringing you the latest installment in my series where I talk about my most anticipated releases for the upcoming quarter. So in this video I'm going to be talking about books that are coming out in July, August, and September. All the books in this list fit into three main categories. The first of course is romance. This includes mostly queer rom-coms plus some Kindle Unlimited reads that I'm excited for as well as a few traditional romances. I also have a category of thrillers. This one is smaller than usual just because I haven't found myself reaching for thrillers as much but there are still a few that I'm super excited about. And the final category is going to be science fiction slash fantasy. I think all of these are queer. I do like to read some science fiction and fantasy as long as they have queer romances in them <laughs> because if you didn't know that's kind of my thing. That's what you can expect from this list and let's just hop right into it. So the first category I'm going to talk about are romance books and these are ordered in the order that they will be released in. So the first of which is The Romance Recipe by Ruby Barrett. This book comes out on July 12th and is a queer rom-com. It's a female-female romance between a fiery restaurant owner and her head chef. This definitely gives me Love and Other Disasters vibes which is a book that came out earlier this year that I read and loved. It was another rom-com with cooking as like a major theme. Super excited for this one. I think it's gonna be great. The next book on my list is The Language of Seabirds by Will Taylor. This book comes out on July 19th. This isn't necessarily a romance romance, it's actually a queer middle grade, but it is a contemporary so I put it in this category. This is pitched as a sweet middle grade story about two boys finding love together for the first time during a seaside summer. If that does not sound like something that's right up my alley, I don't know what does. This is definitely giving me like Ashley Herring Blake vibes. Some of my favorite books. I love a hard-hitting queer middle grade, so super excited for this one. Of course, I'm very highly anticipating Husband Material by Alexis Hall. This book comes out on August 2nd, and I do already have this one pre-ordered. Cannot wait to get my hands on it. This book is the follow-up to Alexis Hall's Boyfriend Material. It's a continuation of Luke and Oliver's story, and in this book, Luke is kind of feeling the social pressure to propose to Oliver, but hijinks ensue I'm sure. Hopefully though it will culminate in the two getting married. I can only hope. Next I'm also highly anticipating The Feeling of Falling in Love by Mason Deaver. This book also comes out on August 2nd. I absolutely love the title of this book. It shares its title with a song that I absolutely love. I don't know if the title is based on this song or not. I feel like it probably is. Um, the Kim Petras and Cheat Code song literally called The Feeling of Falling in Love and I sing it every time that I see this book in the cover. Oh I love it. That'll just be the soundtrack to this book hopefully. This book follows our main character Josh. Josh and his best friend Neil, and Neil is also his friends with benefits. They're supposed to be attending a wedding together of a childhood friend, but right before they are set to leave, Neil confesses his feelings to Josh, and Josh is like, whoa dude, I don't feel the same way, sorry about it. So they kind of have a tiff, break it off. Josh still needs a date to this wedding though, especially because Neil is supposed to be there, so he drags his unwilling roommate Wyatt with him. Wyatt thinks Josh is being a dick. <laughs> But they come to know each other better on this trip and maybe fall in love. So this book sounds fun. I have read another book by Mason Deaver before and loved it, so I have a good feeling about this one. This next book is just for me. I'm probably the only one excited about it, <laughs> but that is Presidential Chaos by Saxon James. This is the third book in her Frat War series, and it comes out on August third in the series it basically follows different couples from these two different rival frats on this college campus and I believe this third book is going to be the kind of like enemies to lovers romance of the two presidents of these rival frats. Their like romance has been hinted at in previous books. I can't wait. I'm sure I will love this one. In a different vein I'm sure lots of people are excited for this book and that is Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. This book comes out on August 23rd and is the highly anticipated second full-length novel from Allie Hazelwood and this is another rom-com following a scientist who is forced to work on a project with her nemesis and of course they end up falling in love. So I did really like the love hypothesis so I'm super excited for her follow-up. The next book I'm looking forward to is called Homegrown Talent by Joanna Chambers and Sally Malcolm. This book comes out on August 25th and is a male male Kindle Unlimited romance but it sounds so cute and like it has all the cozy vibes. We're following our main character Mason and he is an upcoming model and influencer and he gets this um, gig on this daytime TV show about gardening except he doesn't know anything about gardening. So enter his co-host Owen who is a gardener and also happens to be Mason's ex's brother and they kind of have like a frenemies thing going on and then they're encouraged to play up like a will they won't they romance on the set of this TV show by their producers. You can see where I'm going with this but just 
just the concept of like gardening and a like fake romance. I feel like it has so much potential to be a very successful book in my opinion. <laughs> Super excited for this one. I think it sounds really cute. I am also looking forward to In the Event of Love by Courtney K. This book comes out on August 30th. This book sounds so cute. Also has really cozy vibes. It's pitched as being like a Hallmark movie. This is a queer second chance rom-com where the two heroines attempt to save the town's family Christmas tree farm. Like what? That sounds amazing. I'm so excited. A sapphic Hallmark Christmas movie wrapped up in book form. What could be better? Of course, I also have to mention Lunatic by Only James. This book comes out on August 31st. This is another male-male Kindle Unlimited romance, and if you have watched me at all, you probably have heard me talk about this series. This book is going to be the sixth in Only James's Necessary Evils series, and this edition follows Archer, who is the family alcoholic and gambling addict. <laughs> And this is his romance with Mackenzie Shepard, who is the brother of Shep from the Elite Protection Services series. I'm really looking forward to this one. I think it's going to be really great. A lot of fun. Yeah, August 31st can't come fast enough. Next, I want to mention The Holiday Trap by Rowan Parrish. This book comes out September 6th and is another queer rom-com. It follows two separate couples who meet and get together on this holiday. I think we're actually initially following two best friends. They both have like recently had breakups, so they agree to a house swap for the holidays and that's kind of how they meet their respective future partners. Sounds cute and fun, so definitely keeping this one on my radar. Another book that's probably on everyone's radar is The American Roommate Experiment by Elena Armas. Elena Armas is, of course, the author of The Spanish Love Deception, which I didn't love, but I feel like her second book will probably be better. Hopefully it will be edited more. <laughs> but the premise sounds really cute, so I'm probably going to give it a try anyway. It comes out on September 6th, and it follows our main characters, Rosie and Lucas, who, upon a mix-up, end up sharing Rosie's best friend slash Lucas's sister's apartment in New York City for a couple of months. Rosie is a writer who's struggling for inspiration, so upon learning this, Lucas decides to help her out by taking her on all of these dates around the city to try and inspire her romantic writing. So this sounds super cute, and hopefully, as long as this one is not quite as verbose as a Spanish love deception, I will really enjoy it and I'm still looking forward to it anyway. Next on my list is a queer YA book and that is The 99 Boyfriends of Micah Summers by Adam Sass. This book comes out on September 20th and it sounds like it'll be like so funny and ridiculous. <laughs> In this book we're following our main character Micah Summers. Micah has a very popular like Instagram page where he draws his boyfriends. He's up to number 99 and for number 100 he really wants it to be like a real person that he's thinking about dating. So he's embarking on a quest to go find somebody. He doesn't typically date. He's pretty shy but he's determined to find true love and this book just sounds fun and I do like myself a cute campy YA every once in a while so I definitely am anticipating this one. And last but not least in my romance category I'm also looking forward to Where We End and Begin by Jane Agaro. This book comes out on September 27th. Our two main characters are like star-crossed lovers and they get a second chance at a romance together when they're reunited at a wedding in Nigeria. I've heard such good things about this author's previous books. I've never picked up any of them but I really would like to soon and this one sounds good as well so I definitely am interested in picking it up when it comes out. All right and next category is my thriller category. It's just a couple books in this category of like authors that I've really loved in the past but I did want to share them with you as well. So the first of which is The It Girl by Ruth Ware. This book comes out on July 12th. Ruth Ware's books are kind of a hit or miss for me and everyone else, but I'm always interested in them. They always sound good, so I probably will pick this one up. But this is basically about a woman who is determined to solve the mystery of her friend that was killed many years ago. I think her friend was like the it girl. Is a decade later, her murder has still not been solved, so this friend is going out trying to solve it. Next on my list is a book called Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. This book comes out on July 19th. I believe it's YA and queer as well, so I like that. In it, we're following our main character, Vera, who has an estranged relationship with her mother, but when her mother calls her up and like begs her to come home for a while, she finally agrees. So Vera goes home to this house of a serial killer. It turns out her dad was a serial killer, buried a bunch of bodies in this house. He has since like been arrested, but once Vera comes back to this house, creepy things start to happen. There are notes in her father's handwriting being left around the house and she's understandably freaked out. I think they have like a weird creepy neighbor that could be in on it or is her dad still around? Who knows? 
who knows this book sounds really cool the cover is gorgeous so i am super excited to pick this one up and i think it'll be really good another thriller i think sounds cool is the last advantage by megan miranda this book comes out on july 26th and it follows a journalist who disappears when she's investigating a bunch of disappearances that have happened in this small town called cutter's pass i always like thrillers that are set in like small towns with disappearances especially if they follow like an investigative journalist or a podcaster or something so i feel like this book sounds right up my alley i don't I don't think I've ever read a Megan Miranda book yet, but maybe this one's my first. <laughs> I don't know if it's my most anticipated thriller, but it's definitely one of them. That's The Honeys by Ryan Lasala. This book comes out on August 2nd and sounds so freaking good. We're following our main character Mars. Mars is actually gender fluid, so that's really cool rep as well. But Mars's twin sister dies under horrific circumstances. Mars is determined to uncover the truth of what happened to her. So he insists on attending this summer academy in his sister's place. And once he gets there, he discovers this like we call it nightmare. It's giving midsummer vibes. <laughs> Sounds really creepy and really weird and he meets his sister's friend group that were called the honeys and he really thinks they have something to do with it. They're really weird. This book just sounds really cool. The cover again is beautiful. Um, I love the rep. I love the midsummer vibes. I love the cultiness, the mystery. I think this book sounds so cool and I'm definitely definitely gonna be picking this one up as soon as possible. Next on my list is Stay Awake by Megan Golden. This book comes out on August 9th and follows our main character Liz. At the beginning of this book, Liv wakes up in the back of a taxi with no idea how she got there or where she was the night before. When she gets back to her apartment, there is a stranger living there who has no idea who Liv is and has lived there, seems like, for multiple years. Liv is very confused. She seems to not be able to remember the last two years of her life, but on her hand, there's this message, scrawled, stay awake, and she has like a bloody knife in her bag, and she has no clue what happened, and she's being persecuted and chased for this crime that she does not remember committing. But there is someone who does know what she did the night before and is determined on making her forget it permanently. So this book sounds very intense and very good and comes out the day after my birthday. So sounds great to me. Next is probably actually my most anticipated thriller on this list and that is The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I read Ashley Winstead's debut earlier this year. Really loved it. Thought it was great. So I'm super looking forward to this book. It comes out on August 16th and it follows our main character who is determined to destroy this powerful cult and avenge the deaths of the women taken in by it no matter the cost. That's all I need to know. Sounds fucking great to me. I love cult books. I love women empowerment. Let's get it. And finally, my last thriller on this list is Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. This book comes out on August 30th and it is a closed door mystery and it centers Daisy Darker's family reunion. They go to this gothic house on this isolated island. When the tide comes in, they're cut off from the rest of the world for like eight hours or something. And of course, people start dying one by one. I'm obsessed with like a closed door mystery, especially in like a weird atmosphere atmospheric creepy place. This sounds right up my alley so I'm super excited to check this one out. I don't care how similar it is to the guest list. It sounds great to me. <laughs> Give it to me now, please. And now we've come to my science fiction fantasy slash historical slash other <laughs> category. It's mostly just clear books with magic or some other additional element that makes them not contemporary. So let's just hop right into it. The first of which is A Strange and Stubborn Endurance by Foz Meadows. This is a fantasy book following our main character, Vel. Vel is outed in this kind of horrific incident. He really thinks that he has probably ruined his country's chance at diplomatic relations because he was engaged to be married to this woman from an other nation but the other nation is like hey you can just marry her brother instead we don't care <laughs> he's now arranged to be married to Kay but there is some kind of faction that's willing to kill to end this new alliance and Vel and Kay kind of have to trust each other even though they don't know one another obviously they fall in love because it's a fantasy romance <laughs> hello sounds great I can't wait for this one I've been so into fantasy romance recently so very excited for that one also super excited for A Taste of Golden Iron by Alexandra Rowland this is another male male fantasy romance and it comes out on August 30th that takes place in a kingdom that's kind of like the Ottoman Empire. I don't really know much more about it but the cover is freaking beautiful and a queer fantasy romance is really all I need to know so I'm super excited for this one. Another one I'm really looking forward to is Self Made Boys by Anna Marie Mecklemore. This book comes out on September 6th and is a queer retelling of The Great Gatsby. The Great Gatsby is not one of my favorite books but um, a queer retelling of it sounds great to me, so I can't wait to read this one. It centers a trans Nick and a trans Gatsby, which is really cool, and obviously their homoerotic relationship <laughs> with one another. <laughs> Naturally, 
So this honestly sounds like the Great Gatsby that we all deserve. So definitely we'll be checking this one out. Also, I would like to pick up The Sunbearer Trials by Aidan Thomas. This book comes out on September 6th. This is a Mexican inspired fantasy with a trans main character and it kind of is like, to me, it almost sounds like a mix between The Lightning Thief and The Hunger Games, but queer and Mexican. Um, so I think it follows a bunch of like demigods who compete in these trials. Just like, I don't know. Sounds good enough to me. The last book I read by Aiden Thomas wasn't a hit, but Cemetery Boys really was. And this sounds more similar to Cemetery Boys. So I'm hoping I will love this one. And then I, I lied. I have a fourth category. This is just a random additional book that I think sounds really interesting that I wanted to throw in here. It is nonfiction. And that is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. This book comes out on August 9th and is a memoir about Jeanette's life growing up in Hollywood and how she didn't really want to be there and how her mother forced her to and all of her struggles that she dealt with like eating disorders and addiction. It sounds really devastating but hopefully it's like ultimately hopeful because I think it ends up talking about how Jeanette retook over control of her life after her mother was no longer in it. I think Jeanette's story is I've listened to her on like podcasts and stuff before. I think it's super interesting and super tragic, but ultimately I think her story is really cool and it deserves to be heard. I'm really interested in this book, so I definitely will be checking it out once it comes out. All right, and those are all of the books I'm looking forward to over the next couple of months. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know if I missed any books that are coming out in the next couple of months that you're super excited about. I would love to know. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok and Goodreads, all that good stuff. I'm trying to be more active on all social platforms, so I would really appreciate you giving me a follow. Also like this video, it really helps me out as well as subscribe if you want to see more bookish content from me. And that is going to be everything. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!